Welcome back to Nanal is Don. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have one last match for tonight is going to be Randy versus Golda. Golda going for Hovercraft. Randy going for Rovers. Trying to do the Rover Hovercraft matchup, which I'm curious to see how it pans out because Rover versus Hovercraft is one of those matchups that I. Not sure how it goes, actually. I mean. There have been a lot of changes to both Rover and Hovercraft factories, so I'm curious to see how this works out, especially at this level. A few darts coming in here already from Randy, just scouting out, seeing what they can find of Golda, and they should be able to find a bit of damage here and there. No real defenses either, getting rid of one of the metal extractors for basically free. A dart coming in from Golda, sorry, dagger coming from Golda should be able to deal with that. Another dagger up the side, but Randy stomps that handily. Now, of course, daggers being what they are, you need like five of them to take out a Scorcher. But once you do, you can take out basically any number of Scorchers. Same time, this dagger just trying to find a way out. Just getting away. Getting away. <laughs> I don't think you can outpace the Hovercraft, but, or the dagger, but hey, it works out. Dark continuing around the map. Should be able to find good information. Just seeing exactly where Golda is set up. Because Randy doesn't know where Golda's factory is. Now, however, having found it. They have basically complete information about Golda's base. Just double checking the back, because of course they don't know whether or not Golda decided to expand up the top, and Randy appears satisfied. And nothing has really been built over to the top. While at the same time, not able to hit, because spherical range is apparently a bit of a problem, I guess. I'm not sure why that's not hitting. I think because it's spherical, like, is it spherical range, but cylindrical targeting, that might be a bug to look into. So that was an interesting bit of scouting coming from Randy. At the same time, they got a fairly strong economy going behind that. Golda, however, being considerably more aggressive with their economic start. Both players, however, running into some e-stall issues. Despite the fact that Golda didn't actually have this wind generator touched at all due to a bizarre targeting issue. But Randy might have... No, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. There's nothing going to stop them. I mean, the Ripper's already here. Should be able to get rid of the daggers. The daggers won't be able to take care of it in time. Just... Wow, that dagger got jibbed. Sheesh. They're just completely wrecked. Just hit the face and then pieces of dagger on top of the Ripper. Like it was nothing. Actually, that and what is Golda building? Okay, scalpel switch. That makes sense. Or dagger scalpel. Is that scalpel switch or dagger scalpel? That is a scalpel switch. Same time, Randy deciding to not build anything. I mean, mostly a fence or ripper. Not a bad choice considering that Randy has been going for this defensively, while Gold on the other hand going highly aggressive, getting a lot of metal as a result, just needs more energy, and is working on it, but I think they're going to be having a tough time. I mean, there's only so much they can do. Even with wind generators up here in the highest ground, it's still only 0.7. So not great. Not terrible, but not great. Same time, Golda having to deal with all these Spencers coming in, which can't really be assaulted by the daggers at this point. The daggers, I mean, they they just run into lotuses and die. Golda knows full well about that. Get enough radar at the front. It's worth pointing out, of course, that the commanders now have radar attached to them. They just have radar? Yeah, it provides until radar. All commanders have radar automatically on them. It's a fairly recent change. So, everyone does get a reasonable amount of scouting, especially with forward commanders. That being said, what does Randy have for information? Not much. They only have about half the map that they know about. And Golda has been building up a lot of units around that. In fact, Golda has been building a very strong economy around that. The only downside is that Golda has been running into some east all issues and a little bit of a build power crunch. But whether or not that matters remains to be seen, especially as a couple of these rippers do go down over to the north. Allowing Golda to continue to expand, build up more radar, build up more metal, hopefully more wind fairly soon. I mean, from here, and they can build wind generators quite well. Actually, oh, hey, this area up here, they can build quite a few wind generators. There's like 20 energy worth of wind generators, but unfortunately for Golda, they don't have a command that can go up there, so they need to terraform their way up. And I don't really see that happening. I think Golda's not going to focus on that too much. Instead, focusing on frontline solars. 
Walls and power production. Also backline solars, just in case. Getting some of those built up just to even out their economy. Just to get to make sure their energy is not going to fluctuate too much. But even with that, they are still accessing quite a bit. Randy, on the other hand, has found a way to use all of their metal. So Golda, I'm a little bit concerned about when it comes to the late, the middle late game. Just because of the fact that they are running a bit low on, for, on build power. Still kind of working out. This is sort of the moment of truth here. This is where it all comes down to it. Randy and Golda going for it. Scalpels are not especially in position. Their fencers are definitely getting the advantage, getting the drop on them. Scalpels have managed to outpace them in terms of overall damage, though, which does put the value equation in Golda's favor. More importantly, though, Halbert's coming in here. That will basically counter out the fencers completely. Use those, put them to the front. Fencers target those, and then come in with the scalpels, force the player to micro to get out of that. And, of course, they are on hold fire. Gota throwing them in hold fire, as I suggested in the previous game we saw Halberds in. But now we're seeing Gota with the only Halberd player right now. Just there is the distraction. Throwing the fencers. Where are the scalpels? Uh, scalpels are coming in, but the fencers are wisely retreating. Randy knows what's up. Make sure they don't get torn apart by this. They are going to lose a fencer. Sorry, a ripper, not a fencer. They're going to lose a ripper to this. But that is fine. They have enough rippers that'll still stop any dagger assault from coming in. While at the same time, plenty of daggers noticing Ravagers going over to the south. About a dozen daggers trying to deal with this. It is a little bit late, though. Unfortunately, the daggers were not in position to get any Ravager killed before the assault started on the base over to the south. And this could be a huge blow to Gorda's energy economy. But no, the, the regroup happens just in time. All of the mini generators save the Quill as well is safe. And now a bunch of Reclaim has just shown up in Goda's backyard. At the same time, the battle over to the north is becoming a bit of a stalemate. Both players setting up trenches. Well, rather, setting up not really trenches because you can terraform those. Setting up a bunch of defenses. At the same time, Randy again harassing to the south. Getting a bit more value this time around. Taking care of a few metal extractors. Getting rid of a couple Quills as well. But the daggers once again come in here and rip apart all these Ravagers, making it again another suicide mission for Randy's Ravagers. That's a nice ring to it. Or it would if they, you know, weren't all flaming husks of metal by now. Or would be if the daggers... Okay, I think Gota might have slightly overestimated the dagger firepower here. So now the one Ravager's over the back here is like, okay, like two daggers can come over here and just kill it. Or actually, one dagger come over here and kill it with the amount of damage Ravagers do. But no, Golda going, going instead for a counterattack over to the south. Not sure if they're aware of that Raptor hanging out, but it doesn't really matter. Randy is not using it to deal any damage. Actually forcing it to retreat, which will be its do doom. While at the same time, all of these daggers able to wipe out pretty much the entire frontline defense, frontline economy. Getting these two Lotuses will be a nice little boon, opening up a path through... This valley, which will make it very easy for Gold to get units through. Now, anything can go through this valley. That that was an amazing little early assault here. Howard's coming in, just doing a bit of cleanup as the scalpels. They basically pivot. They rotate south, forcing Randy to respond in kind, but it's not enough. Well planned out by Golda. And now with that area open, there's basically any position that Golda wants in order to be able to do more damage to Randy's base. Forcing Randy to come through a small choke point into the scalpels. That will get rid of all of Randy's army. From there, Golda should be able to go in for a further assault and take the game. Randy's really not running in a whole lot now. I and mean, Golda, having taken now two-thirds of the map, having gotten a very strong energy infrastructure, despite what we had earlier on in the game. Turning that into mostly just... Build power. Not really using overdrive right, much right now. But it's fine. Gota still has a massive economic advantage despite that. And the Ravagers coming in for a counterattack. Trying their best, but it's not nearly enough. As Gota's commander decides to hide themselves in the ground. Why not? Doesn't really matter. The Scalpels are doing an amazing job getting rid of all of these Ravagers. And Daggers coming in to flank. As the Ravagers do outpace the Scalpels, but the Daggers... Clean up after all that. And with that, Randy basically has no army whatsoever. Scalpels, realizing they can't catch up with the Ravagers, of course, move back, go, press the assault. 
Randy attempting to rebuild, but it's simply not going to be enough as the second assault coming in from the same wave. Randy having lost all their forces, Golda having basically lost none of them. But Randy having built up gunship land in the process, going for a counterattack of locusts, which will be an interesting raiding assault. Looking to go for that power infrastructure that Golda has over to the northeast. I just don't know if it's enough. It feels like it's too little too late. And that is going to be another force of raptors wiped out by the scalpels. At this point, it feels like a distraction force to allow the locusts to do their job. But again, I don't see this working out. Randy, if they can't defend their main base during this assault, then there's not a whole lot the locusts can do. So right now, the locusts are coming in. They are likely to start taking out some of the economy over to the northeast. But at the same time, Golda just coming in that last ramp. And there's very little to defend. The Nimbus is up, and that is a great choice for this ramp. And the Nimbus can just wipe everything out with its splash, while at the same time all the Locusts doing their job. But honestly, the Locusts probably have been better off at home to defend instead of going in for an attack off to the side, because now Gota's forces have come up. They're past the ramp. They're through, and Randy knows that that is game. Gota managing to push in despite some early metal excess. Despite Randy having a slight, really, advantage early on. Gota turning it around. Just smart counter rating as like smart building up of economy, smart counter rating as the raiders as the as everything comes in. And honestly, Randy just didn't have enough radar compared to Golda. Golda had a much better awareness of what was going on in the map than Randy did. Which left Randy not entirely aware of where to attack or when they could attack. Opening everything up for Golda eventually to just counterattack after wiping out the major raids. Simple as that. That was, a, that was a really cool match to watch, though. So, that is going to be it. Fine note to end on. So, with that, I will... I will bid you farewell. That is going to be it tonight. So, thank you all for watching. And have a good night, everyone.